Shinene was born at a very young age, and since this time, had very few human friends. She was just a small town girl, living in what she felt was a very lonely world, until one fateful evening she decided to change all of that. She took the midnight train and brought home a five foot long ball python named Kick You in the Face Maneater 911. Shinene didn't know much about Kick You in the Face Maneater 911 or why his name was so long, as she had gotten him from a friend after his previous owner had mysteriously disappeared. All she knew was that she loved him. She loved him so much that she would take him to bed with her at night where he would stretch out beside her. One day, Shinene noticed Kick You in the Face Maneater 911 had stopped eating. She didn't know why. She was terrified for her friend and brought him to the doctor immediately. The doctors were stunned at what they found. After running multiple tests, they gave her the shocking news. Her five foot long ball python, Kick You in the Face Maneater 911, didn't love her. He had instead been sizing her up to eat her in her sleep. Shinene was devastated by this shocking news. She didn't know that her ball python had any feet, let alone five. As the doctors went into more detail, it all became clear. Her first clue should have been his name. Kick you in the face, man eater 911 made no sense for an animal without legs. Shinene learned a fateful lesson that day. Snakes, like dogs, belong in the wild. Tell me. And remember, this is for posterity, so be honest. How do you feel? Well, Tyrone, that is a lot to break down. But let me just start off by saying, I'm John. This is Butts. And today, we're going to break down the five most popular myths about snakes. All right, let's get right into it. Number five. You all have heard this story. It's been going around the internet. There's been videos on it for quite some time now. Woman gets a snake. Her snake goes off food. She takes it to the vet and the vet tells her that it's sizing her up to eat her. Oh my goodness. And the reason it went off food was it was making room for her. Now the reason this story is completely false is because, well, first of all, no vet is going to tell you that because it's not true. And second of all, and most importantly, there are four kinds of snakes that get big enough to eat a human. Reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, African rock pythons, and green anacondas. Of those four, only one has been recorded as having eaten a person, and it wasn't a pet. So the snakes in question, they're all ambush predators. They are opportunistic feeders, which means they sit there and they wait for a prey item to come by, and then they have a split second to decide if they're gonna eat that animal or if it's gonna get away. They don't have that level of forethought to sit there and go, maybe I should wait a few months, maybe I should wait a few years. Is this human ripe? If they did this in the wild, they would never eat. So they certainly don't do this in captivity. Now you might be thinking, well, John, there is an instance of somebody being eaten by a snake, so it must be possible, right? Well, the only snakes that have ever eaten a human are wild reticulated pythons, and they've been out in the jungle, and a human has walked by, and they split-second decision, struck, and ate. And while this is very sad, it adds more credibility to the fact that this story is incredible as in it is not credible. It was made up for clicks and views and scare tactics. No snake, no matter what species or what size, has ever laid down beside its prey or gone off food to make sure it had room to eat it. It's just not how they're wired. Number four, snakes chase people. Generally speaking, snakes will not chase people. Most of the time when people are claiming that a snake has chased them, that snake has just crossed paths with them. Or, in the case of cottonmouths and water moccasins, which are the same thing, a lot of times they're just floating down the creek. And I've had this happen. I've been wading down the creek fishing, and a cottonmouth will come floating towards me in my direction. Now, his directive, his prerogative is not to get to me. 
He's just cruising. And I let him go by and all is fine. There have been other times that I've been standing on the bank and they come slithering up and I just kind of move my foot a little bit so they see me, they know I'm there, and they turn around and hightail it back to the water. Now there are some snakes that will come at you if they feel like their life is in danger. Think about it this way. You're out camping, you run into a black bear. What are you supposed to do? Make yourself as big as possible, be as loud as possible, show that you're not afraid, that you're the threat, and they will turn and run. It's the same thing for snakes. Certain species won't turn and run. They will get as big as possible. They'll be as loud as possible, striking at you, coming towards you, because they're afraid that you're going to kill them. Now, no snake has ever outrun a human. So all you got to do is turn and walk away, and they're not going to get you. So do snakes chase humans? No. They might come towards you to intimidate you, but they're not going to chase you down. Right? Number three, this is another good one. When you're out ripping or you're out fishing or hiking or what have you, and you come across a snake and you're like, is this snake venomous? Now you've heard it said, hi, that you can tell if a snake is venomous by looking at its pupils. Now, Buttercup here has round pupils. She's a ball python. She's non-venomous. But is that true for every snake? No. One of the most venomous and most iconic venomous snakes, the king cobra, has round pupils. So we know that doesn't work. The other thing that people use is the shape of their heads. If it's a triangle shape, they're venomous. Obviously not the case. So the best way to tell if a snake is venomous or not is to know what is in your area before you go out, be able to identify it, and if you don't know what it is, stay away from it anyway. It's that simple. Number two. Baby snakes are more venomous or rather more dangerous than adult snakes because when you get bit by a baby venomous snake, they'll lose all their venom. They don't know how to control it. So you should be out there killing baby snakes because they're the most dangerous. Everything about that is not true. Baby snakes have less venom in their venom glands than most adult snakes have in their fang alone. So even if they did loose all of their venom on you, first of all, it's not more toxic. And second of all, it's not more venom. So that whole thing is just an old wives tale. And that leads us into our number one. The only good snake is a dead snake. Cover your ears, I'm sorry. What happens when you're out on the farm and you kill every snake you come across? And you're poisoning the rats and the snakes eat them and then your rat population decreases but then what happens it skyrockets because those snakes are eating those rats then they're dying then you don't have any snakes you don't have as many natural predators for mice and rats and it can actually devastate the economy because a plague of mice and rats will eat all the crops crops trickle down to our meat sources snakes keep these things at bay so they contribute a lot more to our way of life than you would even think. And on a small scale, they're great for pests in your garden. Certain species of snakes will eat more than just rodents. They'll eat bugs. They'll eat snails. They're great to have around. And if you encounter a venomous snake, just leave it alone. Or have somebody who knows what they're doing move it to a different location. So snakes are good for our ecosystem. Snakes are good for our economy. Snakes are good for our mental health, if you really get to know one. Aww. Hi. And it is not true that the only good snake is a dead snake. I find it very interesting that it is the only animal that it is socially acceptable for people to say, oh, if I see one, I'm just going to chop its head off. I don't care if it's venomous or not. Can you imagine if people said that about dogs? The internet would lose its mind. But for some reason, People see snakes as scary. And that's what we're trying to change. We're trying to tip the scales. Ah, ah, he said it, he said it. In favor of these animals so that people understand it's one of God's creatures, just like puppies. And believe it or not, a lot more people have died because of dogs than they have snakes. And the only people that do die because of a venomous snake bite 
are people who don't get treatment. Usually you have a full day. It's not like you get bit and you die unless you have a heart condition or something else is wrong. Of course that depends on the snake, but here in the States, that's usually the case. And it's always because somebody stepped on them or stepped near them and they felt like their life was threatened or somebody was doing something stupid and they were harassing a snake and how to say this in a family friendly way, mess around and find out. <laughs> and that's what happens. So we should respect these animals and let's kill ignorance and not snakes. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any ideas on future videos, what you would like to see, please let me know. By the way, her name is not Butts. We just call her Butts. Her name on her driver's license is Buttercup, but on the streets she's known as Butts. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to share it. If you want to see more like it, hit that subscribe. If you liked it, hit that like. And leave a comment down below if you have any feedback. I'd love to hear from you. See you next time.